Hello, Gunner James 105. I had uh, recently done a video on a collection of ammo boxes that I'd assembled over the years, and uh, I'm still planning on doing some uh, more in depth, I guess, uh, uh, videos on certain ones. Um, so, uh, put that on hold since not long ago I picked this up, uh, which wasn't featured in the uh, last video. This is a uh, Ren Gun Magazine uh, ammo box, or box, and uh, it's pretty cool. This is World War II, and uh, I will just tip it up on its side here before I open it. Um, it has this uh, canvas type carrying strap. It's fairly sturdy, and uh, I will tip it this way so that we can see the markings on it. So we've got uh, Box Magazine, and that's uh, or Box Magazine's Bren 303 Mark One Star, and uh, it's very faint. Oh yes, we also have this, which uh, appears on all of these uh, MC. So uh, I believe that's the manufacturer of this box, but uh, right here, very faintly, is uh, a C broad arrow. So this would be a Canadian box, and so it's uh, it's in its green color with uh, or kind of a olive drab or dark green, and. Uh, it's been around, a lot of the paints wore off, but uh, still pretty nice. So I'm just going to open that up and uh, the uh, system we have here in Canada, we're in the metric system and uh, when I would years ago buy a carton of eggs, it was 12 eggs. So if I went to Holland, I would get a carton with 10 eggs. Um, this uh, is something that's not changed on the metric system in Canada we still get a dozen eggs and uh, when it concerns the Bren gun magazines there are 12 so um, this whole box with 12 magazines um, was $140 Canadian and so uh, I don't know I've seen these things sell for just an individual magazine fifty dollars plus shipping uh, all the way up to eighty dollars and so I felt that this was a pretty darn good deal um, this box is uh, nice in that uh, a lot of them are missing this felt type um, piece here that's usually gone but that's just to uh, hold things tight in the box from rattling around and then the uh, the felt that runs here and all around the uh, box is in pretty good condition so that's all that's all still there so that's pretty nice most of these um, I haven't taken out they're all greasy uh, a lot of oil and there's oil down in the bottom of that box but I have wiped one off here the uh, little shiny discs or uh, buttons that you see on all of these is per Canadian law uh, anything that would fire uh, semi-automatic or full automatic or whatever for uh, uh, those that have the license they can still have these without that pin or rivet is what it is the rivet to uh, allow only five rounds at a time so that's uh, not to be removed and uh, so those all have that so everything's legal as far as that goes now this box and its magazines being as that it's a, uh, a Canadian uh, uh, box it would have come out of the uh, Inglis factory that was in uh, Ontario and Inglis made the uh, thousands and thousands of brands they I believe they had a contract that uh, they were working with the British so the British were uh, other Commonwealth were uh, uh, putting money into this uh, factory and uh, financing it but uh, 
these magazines. Not all of them have this. I'm going to try and get that uh, on there. Uh, you first have to find it. But it's actually marked. This this is one that I did take the grease off. Oh darn. Here we go. Um, they're on this way. But you can see the J.I. Which appears there. And then uh, also... Uh, Very faint. Uh, it's upside down, but that's the J.I. And then it also appears on the bottom. <laughs> well, it's... It's there. So there's the John Inglis Canadian-made magazine. So um, these here, I do know, uh, I had picked up some um, along the way. And uh, this one here, it looks like it's it's in pretty rough shape. But there's various um, manufacturers of these things. I mean, if you were uh, looking at Australia, you'd be having uh, uh, a magazine with uh, M.A., which was Munitions Australia, not Musicians. A uh, British one might have uh, M-117, and that was the code for the Hercules Cycle uh, factory in the United Kingdom. Um, and so there was, a, there was a few different manufacturers of these. And Inglis uh, also, um, in addition to the thousands of Bren guns they made, they also did the uh, Browning uh, nine millimeter, uh, the Browning high power handgun for the military, <clears throat> and so uh, just beside here too, I've got uh, the magazine pouch. This one here, uh, some of the markings are are there, but that's a 1941, and uh, the C broad arrow for Canadian. But you uh, you could fit two of these magazines in there, and then that would be war. Uh, Worn on your webbing as such, so you could have grenades and or 303 ammunition uh, in uh, clips or bandoliers in one of the pouches and a couple of the Bren gun magazines, as uh, everybody helped out to carry some of that ammunition for that heavy uh, or that heavier uh, machine gun. It would, uh, I mean, it's not a heavy machine gun. I guess it's a, it's classed as light, as in the uh, the ammo that it fires. So. And then uh, I just put in a few of these training or dummy rounds, blanks, just to show you. And uh, a lot of these, there were uh, uh, probably, I think, at least two different types of uh, auto loaders or things that would assist in loading these uh, quickly. Um, but I think most of the time it was all done by hand out in the, uh, out in the field. And, of course, you'd have to do the because it's a rimmed cartridge, you'd have to make sure that you've got them staggered like that so that you'd have uh, one rim in front of the other. And uh, these would hold 30 rounds. I think it was recommended you only put in about 28 um, just uh, because of the spring tension or whatever. Just I think it worked better that way. That little pin there would be uh, depressed with uh, maybe the tip of a bullet and then you could slide that back and, and then flip this over to pull that apart for cleaning or whatever and so uh, yeah this one here um, I thought heck of a deal and uh, kind of unique and neat to have so there's your Ren gun magazine uh, carrier or box thanks for watching